Hi, Good morning. morning. <laughs> Happy Easter. Happy beautiful sunny Sunday morning. Happy Easter to everybody out there. I hope you're sat there still in your PJs eating a load of chocolate just because it's legitimate, isn't it? Easter and Christmas, the two days of the year we can sit in our, um, oh, I've lost my comments, sit in our in our pajamas and eat chocolate for breakfast. I've not had any of mine yet. It's all still here, but I will be tucking into it later on. So wherever you are, I hope you're with me. And um, yeah, I hope the Easter Bunny has brought you lots of lovely goodies to get uh, stuck into. Although uh, a couple of my, my mummy friends and my sister-in-law said yesterday that the shops have gone bonkers it's that whole loo roll situation last year is now this year but it's with easter eggs um and it's crazy um but yeah I'm, I'm hoping you've got some and you can snaffle one to one side at least one uh for today's recipe uh which will be starting in about 40 seconds just letting everybody get in here if you are um, out there watching in your pajamas eating easter chocolate say hello let me know where you are if you're catching up on replay say hi as well and um yeah if you're here on the facebook page drop lots of comments and and, and have a chat really um i hope you are uh, are all really good and well but we're going to get stuck in in a few seconds to easter egg cheesecake now this has been going mental on the blog this week in fact, it's been busier than Christmas, so you guys must absolutely love this. Uh, so I can't wait to do it. And it is super, super, super simple. So you can make it today and it'll be ready for Easter lunch this afternoon, or Easter dinner, or even tomorrow's bank holiday um, as well. But yeah. Let's get going. I don't know about you, if you've been out in the garden this week or, you know, here in the UK, we, we've got an easing on our lockdown restrictions. So we've been seeing people in gardens and getting out and it's been beautiful and sunny and the kids are off school now. So this also is one that's going to be really good to do with them because there's, there's no baking at all involved. So let's have a look at the recipe. So this is my really super easy Easter egg cheesecake and it's no bake and it's just like all my other easter um all my other easter eggs all my other no bake cheesecakes in that we're going to oh they go the wrong way we're going to be making something that's super super simple it's just going to chill in the fridge there's no faffing there's no no nothing to to bake or there's no um water bars to contend with and no gelatin at all it's super super simple and the best thing about it is that you can adapt this and change it and tweak it and you don't have to put it in an easter egg but as you can see that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be making this in the shell of an easter egg um and you can switch around the flavors depending on what egg you've got or whatever you fancy so i'm hoping you've managed to put one aside away from the small, so they don't eat them all before lunchtime. <laughs> so let's get stuck in with some ingredients then. So to start, you're going to need Easter eggs. Now I'm saying two. And when I did this before, I've used these are the smaller ones. These are about 120 gram eggs. Um, and I've used, uh, I used one and a half for the shells. And then I used the final half. Uh, to melt into the chocolate, uh, melt the chocolate for the cheesecake filling. But today I'm going to be using a slightly bigger egg. This is a, I think they call this a medium. This is 256 grams. Uh, this was a Smarties one. The Smarties have gone, sadly. Um, let's just pop that there. And that's, that's this size. Uh, so we're just going to be doing this as the two halves and I'm going to use this cheesecake, this Easter egg um, to melt for the cheesecake filling, although I'm going to save the buttons for me later with a cup of tea. So we're going to be want, you want one or two. If you don't have two, you can just melt regular chocolate into the cheesecake filling and just have, keep your one Easter egg there. So we need our Easter egg. I'm just going to put... Oh, all the packaging. Let's get rid of that. And then to one side. 
and we'll use the buttons as well. Uh, just before we get on to the actual filling stuff, I've got all sorts of other things. We've got Maltese bunnies. These apparently, when Ian went into our local co-op, were the only thing left yesterday when I wanted some extras. Uh, we've got some cream eggs, um, the elusive mini eggs. These are Smarties Unicorn Edition eggs and also some Kit Kat mini eggs. So if you've made an Easter trifle like we did last week, if you've got anything left over, that's perfect. You don't have this like the trifle, you can put whatever you want on the top. It doesn't have to be Easter themed. You could put Haribo or like, you know, the little fried eggs and bits and pieces like that. <laughs> So then, so that's the chocolate side. That, that's the important side, the chocolate side. <laughs> uh, for the filling, however, we're going to need a couple of other ingredients. Um, I'm just going to go grab some out of the fridge. So with this now baked cheesecake, the key ingredient, um, there's two key ingredients actually, let's just move those to one side, and that's uh, cream and cream cheese. So the, the two key things here is that because we're not baking this, because there's no gelatin to set it, we need to make sure it's got a high fat, fat content. So yes, if you're being careful, you know, maybe, <laughs> but you can tweak it, don't worry. Um, but you want to make sure that at least your your cream is thick, double heavy or whipping cream because that fat content is going to hold everything and stabilize the cream cheese as it chills. Single cream just isn't going to whip up. So make sure that's double cream. So you need uh, 100 milliliters of that. For your cream cheese then, you also need full fat cream cheese. And this is because the water content in the um, in the lower fat, and they've got ones called lowest, is really sort of high, which makes this slack, which means as you whip it um, and fold it all in, it starts to loosen and it won't stay, um, um, it won't stay together as, as it's in, in the... In, in your baked cheesecake. The, in the UK here, this is Philadelphia. Now Philadelphia is one of the better ones. It has a one, it has, it still has a water content, but you, when you peel back the foil of the lid, you won't see as much water sat on the surface as you maybe do with some other brands. Um, but you also, uh, in the UK, you, sorry, if you're in the States or in other parts of the, the world, you might be able to find block cream cheese, which is is preferred, really. And there's a lot of information about different cream cheeses and why we use this one here in the UK. And you can use block cream cheese elsewhere if it's available over on the blog on the cream cheese frosting post that I popped up a couple of weeks ago. So this then is our cream cheese. And you want 200 grams of that um, nice and thick. Get it out the fridge about 10 to 15 minutes before you're going to whip it because we don't want it to be totally fridge cold. If it's if that, it, you can get lumps in it. Um, so we want it to be a little bit smoother. So get it out. And I'm, by the time I get around to this, it will be the right temperature. So that's our cream cheese and our double cream. For our biscuit base, now, as you know, on the normal cheesecakes, we have that really nice, crunchy, buttery biscuit base. And we're going to be doing that in our egg as well. We're going to be layering some of that into the bottom of here. So I've got um, 100 grams of digestive biscuits. Uh, um, that's for that. We'll come back to that in a moment. <laughs> and 35 grams of butter. And we're just going to crush these up and melt this and mix it all together to become um, like a, a sandy dough. And then we'll pop it into the bottom of our eggs. The icing sugar that I totally forgot about, 40 grams of icing sugar, we're going to add into our cheesecake filling just to sweeten it a little bit, take the edge off the cheese. And of course, we're going to melt our chocolate into that as well. So there are our ingredients. So they are really quite simple. They're, um, apart from the eggs, there's just five ingredients there. Um, 
And if you didn't want to add chocolate, you just wanted it to be vanilla, you could add a teaspoon of vanilla extract into the cheesecake filling. Or you could use other things. You could use chocolate orange or um, really dark chocolate or all sorts of things, whatever you need. <laughs> Let's go. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting that I've got this here. Um, in terms of equipment, then you're also going to need a large mixing bowl, as always, um, and a couple of bowls for melting things in. Um, I'm going to crush my biscuits today using a mini chopper. <laughs> chopper that I drop in everything. <laughs> oh, I forgot that's not attached there. I'm going to use a mini chopper today. This is when everybody comes on because I've dropped it <laughs> off. So I'm going to use a mini chopper to crush my biscuits today rather than a food processor because we're not using um, a lot. And you're also going to need something like a, uh, a hand mixer to whisk the cream cheese filling together. Um, you can use a stand mixer, but for this, it's only a small amount, so we don't really need to get all the equipment out. So now I've, I've thrown everything around. <laughs> It's a good job I didn't send everything flying, but yes. Let's go back to the to the main picture. Now, the recipe for this is over on the blog, like I've said, so um, which I'll show you later. But if you if you pop over to the the blog there, it's at the top um, in with the Easter favourites, including the mini egg brownie tart that we made the other week as well. But you'll find it all and all the information and all my hints and tips over on the website. <laughs> Uh, without me throwing equipment all over the place. So, let's get started then. And first off, I've got a couple of takeaway containers. That's because I'm going to rest my egg in those so we can chill it in the fridge. So, I'm just going to move that on one side and hope that I don't um, knock it off. So, first of all, I'm just going to split open. Hi, Jude. I've, oh, sorry. I've got a new laptop as well, so it's a lot smaller than it was before, so I have to look at the thing. Don't worry. I hope that you are well, and uh, well done on giving up chocolate for Lent and things. So, yes, this is really simple, though. So if you are waiting on call and you've got everything, you can make it really quickly. <laughs> Just like cheesecake. I haven't had any chocolate this morning. Um, I didn't give up chocolate for Lent, but um, I've been being careful with how much chocolate I've eaten, though, so I can't. And the smell is killing me. I haven't had any Easter chocolate yet this morning. So with your egg, you might want to, uh, it might come apart easily. That's not going to. I don't want to put my fingers straight through it. So, um, because I'll get a hole in there. So I'm just going to gently, let's do it with a chopping board, and I've had a chocolate knife, so, and just gently find the seam of it that looks like it's least um, sealed. Ooh, Mr. Egg. Oh no, this one doesn't want to come apart for me today. Oh, there it goes. Don't let the kids do this. Obviously. This this one, normally these eggs come apart really easily. Ah. Oh no, it's got a crack on one side. No, no, no. We might be, oh. This egg is well sealed up. <laughs> oh no, we might have to resort back to the smaller one because this looks, oh dear. 
This has welded itself. Yeah, this one's welded itself together. They normally come apart a lot easier than that. Let's, what I'm gonna do is waste not, want not. Happy Easter, Marie. Happy Easter, everybody. This egg does not want to play ball. So what I'm just doing now is I'm just peeling off one half. Because it's, these eggs, they're not normally this, um, this well sealed together. <laughs> I'm going to pop my chocolate into a bowl as well, just here, because I'm going to melt that shortly. Let's get this egg to a ooh, happy place. And then we'll take a look at the buttons. I don't think I've... These eggs normally just fall straight apart. It's a good job I've not got one need one to take pictures of, because... <laughs> be terrible um, but yeah so you end up with a chocolate half a little bit neater than that this chocolate here is because get this one part so this is the button <gasps> there's a bag of buttons in the bottom of there and they're not like a cream egg where you can tap it and they all fall apart. Oh dear. Ah, see, look, this one. This one has come nicely apart as I've unwrapped it. So we're gonna end up actually with, we're gonna end up with a big egg and two smaller egg halves. And as you can see, I've just popped them into some old uh, recycled takeaway containers. So I can um, rest them easy there. Oh dear. I'm a bit, a bit sad at my, my wonky egg, but hey, never mind. We've got two that work really well. That's, that's how easy they're meant to come apart. Not, not a bit of a surprising um, situation. So our leftover chocolate then, I'm just going to break down into pieces because we're going to melt that through shortly. We don't need that just yet though. So, that's our chocolate and our eggs sorted. So next thing we're gonna do is, we're not going to knock everything over like I just did. Um, but we're gonna grab our mini chopper. Let's put them over there for the moment with the rest of the chocolate. I'm going to grab our mini choc chopper and our biscuits. And we're doing this in here because we don't need to get the whole big KitchenAid, not KitchenAid, the, the Maggi mix out for this. We can do this quite easily in a little mini chopper like we did this we did this the other day with the mini chopper with something else um, but yeah. so did, did people manage to get hold of easter eggs or is it as the paper said sort of a bit of a, a loo roll frenzy like we had last last year we i had these I bought these eggs a few weeks ago because I didn't want to be without one for today. <laughs> I'm going to keep hold of the bowl to pop these back in, but they just need pulsing, and we're looking for a fine. <laughs> it does take long. We don't want any lumps, any big lumps in there. So. There we go. So I've got fine sandy crumbs and I'm just gonna put them into a bowl. So keep 
kick that to one side and then the butter we're just going to pop in the microwave for about 30 seconds to a minute to melt gently microwave and i don't need that much So we're going for 30 seconds on the butter. And what we'll do once that's melted is make a well in the center of our biscuit crumb and pour that in and bring it together so it's like a sandy dough texture. And like I say, with these eggs then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna spoon some in and press that down so we get that biscuity base there and then pop those in the fridge to chill. Including, oh, this one, I'm really disappointed that the big one didn't come apart so easily. Oh, let's have a look at that. Probably needs a few more seconds. That was just really quick. 30 seconds, another 30 seconds. And when you're melting anything like chocolate or butter in the microwave, it is best to do it in 30 second blasts. And the reason being, oh, butter's having, having fun in there, is that it, you can take it to a point where if you if you heat it for too much, especially with chocolate, it will seize. But so you take it to a point where the residual heat of that butter that's melted will melt any that's left over in there. So. But see, I've got a little bit left in here, but this butter, the heat from the rest of the melted butter will just melt that through. So there we go. And it's not too warm, so when we add it into our chocolate, it's not going to melt it. So with our biscuit crumb then, just make a little well in the centre and pour in that melted butter, get it all in. Put that in the sink. Happy Easter, Gina, happy Easter, everyone. Hope you're all well, and it's lovely. It's lovely and sunny, as Marie wants to tell you as well. Here in the Coxwells today, we've had a beautiful, beautiful week, um, and it looks like it's going to stay as well. And if you are, if you're back on chocolate after Lent, like Jude, then oh, what a day! What a great day! Sunny and chocolate. I'm just going to pop that away for a moment. So now we've got our biscuit crumb. So this is just like we'd normally make a normal cheesecake. I've used digestives, you could use Oreos, you could use dark chocolate biscuits, like dark chocolate digestives or bourbons or something like that. I've just used um, a nice bog standard digestive um, in there. So that's our 100 grams digestives and our um, 35 grams of butter and then in our chocolate shells now I'm just going to scoop some in with each of them I'm probably going to have a little bit too much because I did expect to have a big one but as we know we've destroyed that in the process so I've got a little bit left over that's it. And then, so we scoop that in and then just probably actually get a, a little bit more in this big one. Let's think. So we're just pushing it down with the spoon, being careful not to crack our eggs. Just in there like that. Make sure you leave enough room for your um, cheesecake filling. <laughs> say so if you can wrestle an egg off the kids these 
would be really good for Easter dinner today or tomorrow. So those two, the smaller ones, are nice. But I'm just going to pop a little bit more, actually, into our big one. And it's, it's super simple, but it's been going nuts on the blog this week. It's the... Um, Oh, there's our, there's our 30 minutes. It's been going nuts on the blog this week. I was saying earlier, it's as mad with this as it is with Christmas. In fact, I think yesterday was better than Christmas Eve, which is notoriously like the best day of the year. Um, so, yeah, I was good for so I've got the large one there, left about an inch there of depth of the egg to put our cheesecake filling in, and the same with those two. I'm just resting them in these takeaway trays because they're easy um, for them to stand in the fridge. You can use uh, a dish or something, whatever you have, but these just work. So these are going in the fridge now, just to firm up for about 30 minutes um, or until we're ready to add our filling. And then we're back to our regular cheesecake filling. So let's go three, four things we need. Our, our chocolate, which we're going to melt in a moment. Our double cream, remember double, thick, whipping, heavy, whatever that is, for wherever you are, that's what you want. You want that high fat content. So, oh, I found my mouse and I think I've got. I think I've got a dodgy contact lens today as well. We're making it. <laughs> Gina, do you know? I was saying earlier, and I don't know if if Marie and Jude or anybody else has had that. That um, my sister in law sent my brother out yesterday to find an egg. She couldn't find eggs anywhere. She'd managed to get a few, like like bags, um, like these for the for the, the nephews. Adam couldn't find any. Um, my, my friend that popped over for garden coffee because we can see people in our gardens this year um, for Easter now this in the UK. Um, she couldn't get any. She, she was off as well. All week it's been crazy. Um, and I read an article saying that it is the shell. I, I've not been in any supermarkets. So I, got the, I got these eggs, the, the ones that I'm using, Crikey, they've been sat here for about three or four weeks. Um, and my mother-in-law bought us around two eggs, that and that, the one each, because that's all she, you know, just whatever she could get off the shelves. It's crazy. But somebody said it's like the loo roll situation last year. But just for Easter eggs, it's, it, I, I can't understand it. I tried to get, um, I tried to send... Um, an Easter gift to my, to my nephews and couldn't get anything either. I was just like, what? Where are all the eggs? They'll all be on sale, but there's none left to be on sale like they normally are after Easter. Oh, crazy. Crazy. Oh, yes. I've had to keep these. I've had to say to Ian, do not eat any of the eggs that are in the house because I need them. <laughs> and it's not Easter till today. Oh, I think I've got an iffy contact lens. I'm sorry if I keep... Um, Twitching this eye. So our Easter, our, our Easter egg cheesecake filling. Four ingredients. Uh, our Easter egg chocolate. Uh, our icing sugar, just to give it a little sweetness. Our heavy, whipping, thick, double cream. Anything with a high fat content. And our full fat cream cheese, which has now come up to room temperature. So it's nice and soft for us whipping through. And remember, we want full fat here. This is what holds everything together with the cream, which binds it and makes it really nice and thick and creamy. If you can get block cream cheese, wherever you are, then that's the best. If not, go for something like a Philadelphia that's got, um, but as long as it's full fat, uh, you can get. And you can get, you can get chocolate versions of it as well, but we're going to be adding our chocolate in. So first off, we're going to add our cream cheese. This is 200 grams of cream cheese into a large mixing bowl. 
And we're also going to uh, just add in our icing sugar. And this is, I sieved this earlier because you've watched me sieving icing sugar for the last couple of weeks. Um, and this, I'm just going to fold together. Now, you can do this uh, with a stand mixer um, as well. I'm going to be using um, just a handheld mixer because it's just less washing up. But do this bit by hand because we don't want it to get too thick, uh, sorry, too loose. Because once you start whisking it and whipping it, that water content causes the cream cheese to slacken. And that's when it becomes runnier. This is what you have with cream cheese frosting that we've talked about before. And we don't want that because it won't set properly. And unfortunately, with cream cheese, there's no... There's no fix. So like uh, when our eggs curdle in a cake batter, we can add a little bit of flour in it and bring it back together. Once the cream cheese slackens, there's no coming back um, from it. So just do this bit by hand um, and fold it through. Also, it's less messy than getting big clumps of icing sugar. So we've got our um, cream cheese and our icing sugar in there. You can add a splash of vanilla now. You could add a splash of, of whatever you fancy. Just a splash. Don't add too much water or liquid. So I'm just going to pop that to side for a moment. And then the next two things we're going to do. So we're going to add in our double cream in a moment and whisk that up until it's nice and thick. But I want to melt the chocolate first. So this has a few moments just to cool down slightly so again like our butter 30 second blasts um to to get this melted to a point otherwise it will seize so let's go come on mr microwave i am getting better at using this now <laughs> so that's going to start melting and we're going to take it a bit like the butter to the point where it's almost all melted, the residual chocolate will melt and cream cheese. We're just going to pour in our double cream. That, get rid of that. I'm going to go a little bit more. I'm going to go 45 seconds. <laughs> Ian will be out on his bike getting these notifications from this oven that says your oven program has finished. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to bring the plug around. So I'm just going to be using a hand mixer. You can use a hand blender. Um, you know, sort of like the, 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 the mini chopper that you can change the ends over. You can use KitchenAid or a Kenwood or um, a stand mixer um, to do this, but um, it's just I prefer doing it by hand, having a little bit more control, like I said, over that cream cheese of not slackening it off too much and it being runny. All right. This Easter chocolate does not want to melt today. I'm going to pop that back on again. For another 45. So, we've added our double cream into our cream cheese and our icing sugar. And then we're going to whip this up just like you would do normal cream. I'm going to whip it up. And as that whips everything, the, the double cream becomes thickened and it brings, holds that cream cheese all together. That's what's going to make it nice and thick and sturdy. So that's going to ping again in a few moments. <laughs> I'm thinking, do, what, do I start this or wait for that to ping? It's got six seconds. Let's have a look just through the door. Right, 
one last 30 seconds. And that will be fine. So, ice and sugar double cream and our cream cheese with our handheld whisk. And just whisk it until that thickens up that cream. When that goes off, I'm just going to leave it in there for the moment of the heat. So, make sure you get everything from round the side. This is the noisy bit. Sorry, guys. Oh, that was well timed actually. I'm just going to pop that there. I'm going to have to. I've just seen your uh, comment, Gina. I'm not sure. Right. I'm going to pop that to one side. We're going to stir this chocolate and we're just going to have a look. Uh, I've got this new laptop and it's so much smaller than the other one, which is why I keep bending and looking quite. So any reason flake chocolate bar doesn't melt in the microwave? I don't know why. I don't know. I, I've not, um, I've not tried melting flake. It could be that because the way the flake is, obviously with it quite, um, uh fine and it might already have been treated let me investigate that could mean that i have to eat flake and try melting it in the microwave <laughs> um it, it, i'm assuming it's because of it's quite thin and the way the microwave works is not like this is like Sort of it heats, doesn't it, from the center out, not from the outside. So it could be because of that. Um, I don't know, to be quite honest. I will be honest, flakes don't last very long in this house. They are one of my downfalls. Um, I tend to crumble it all over, but I haven't tried melting it. Um, so let me uh, let me try that out. Um, yeah. So in the meantime, though, as you can see, the... Um, Oh, did you have a, see, I knew that you'd probably be able to help us, Jude, if you were there and not on call. It could be. I wonder if that's probably right. Yes. I think Jude might have your answer there, Gina. It could be because the microwaves work on moving water molecules in the food. Maybe. Maybe the flake, that's why it's crumbly. That's why the, you know, crumbliest, flakiest chocolate. It does taste so good, though. I'm going to check it out. Um, so it does make sense, doesn't it? It does make sense. See, I haven't put my chemistry A-level to, to um, any use since, since I left sick form. <laughs> yeah, I went down the psychology route. <laughs> And ended up where I am here. Uh, it does make sense, and I, I'm going to check it out actually, and, and have a and have a try as well. Oh, that spoon's moving. So we do have in here then our thickened whipped cream and cream cheese and icing sugar. Just going to give that a stir through. We've got something. No, what that was. And it's nice and thick. Smooth and creamy, it's not runny, uh, but we are going to whip it again in a moment. So I've just left the chocolate to, to cool a little. And this was almost melted, like I said, but there was some lumps in there. And just giving it a stir through makes us this beautiful, silky um, Cadbury's um, chocolate. Now, I don't know about you, but I think Easter of chocolate, Easter egg chocolate tastes so much better i don't know if it's the way it's molded or um oh i've got cream everywhere and, and and things but i i used to work with a chap who didn't really like chocolate uh but come easter 
um, and in the sales, he'd buy as many Easter eggs. I've got, I've just wiped that on myself. Uh, he'd buy as many Easter eggs as he could because he loved the chocolate. However, if there's none on the shelves this Easter, there won't be any left over, so he'll be short of supplies. And cream eggs um, are gluten free. So my sister in law, who's celiac, can have cream eggs because they're gluten free. Whereas a lot of others, they, they use flowers or uh, for cutting or doing the molds. But cream eggs are actually, she's celiac, are gluten free. So, uh, yes. Uh, you could use gluten-free biscuits on this if you wanted to make a gluten-free egg, as long as you make sure your main egg was gluten-free as well. So this is cooled down just a little bit. It's not hot to the touch. Um, so I'm just going to add that in there as well. And then, see, it's, it's so easy, this. It's so easy. And say you could add anything you wanted into here. You could add, um, just, uh, you could use um, like chocolate orange or mint chocolate or the arrows or, or all sorts, um, all the crunchy one, all different things. So I'm just going to mix that through. We're going to whisk it in a second as well, just to thicken it back because we've obviously added that chocolate in. And this is it's a nice paleish chocolate um, mixture. It's not a dark chocolate like um, before, but you can you can add more chocolate in if you want. You can add regular chocolate in if you don't want to eat. Use your Easter eggs. Um, I was just thinking, actually, we've got the heroes here, so you could. I mean, there's lots of different things in here. There's a twirl. No, that's not that's like a flake inside, isn't it? But it's only a little one, so I can't melt that. But I just think you've got crunches and caramels. There's lots of different things you could do with whatever is in your Easter egg. I guess as well, a bit like we did on the brownie tart where we put that layer of caramel. You could put a layer of not too much, but a thin layer of caramel on top of your biscuit base before you put your cheesecake filling on or ripple some caramel through it as well. So um, I've folded in the melted chocolate. I'm just going to pop this back on just to finish whisking it up. Make sure I'm not getting it everywhere. <laughs> and pop that off to the side again. So we've got our cheesecake filling. We're going to grab our eggs out of the fridge. And a crusty angled spatula. And a plate knife. So with our eggs and now then I'm just going to Scoop out my filling and dollop it in there like that on all of them. Let's smooth it over in a moment. So I'm just going to now. After last week's episode, when we made that trifle, that behemoth of a trifle, my mother messaged me. She went, I've worked out there's 9,000 calories in that. She was probably right. Ian did work it out. And I think it was quite deep, so you wouldn't need to layer all of it. Um, I'm just going to smooth over now with my trusty angled palette knife that we know I love. Um, and I think Ian worked out, it was when we put the actual ingredients in, it was more like about 6,000, 6, um, but it would serve, crikey, 20 servings or so. We shared it out um, with uh, the new neighbours and um, Ian did a lot of cycling last week. 
so he could eat it. Um, yes. So I've just moved those two over and smoothing this one in as well. I've got a little bit of a crack on one side of this, so I'm just going to be careful. And Gina, you know, if you, when you, uh, I think you might have not been out here when I was talking about when, well, when I was splitting these eggs open. My big egg didn't split as easier as the smaller one, so that's why I've got a really odd half of an egg here with a hole in it. <laughs> Um, it's a good job I've photographed these already for the blog. So that's it, really. Our eggs now are ready to go in the fridge. There's a little bit of cheesecake filling for Ian left over. Now, you can decorate these now. You can save them for a bit until later. I'm going to get another uh, tray out so we can... That in there, in there. So in terms of decorating then, you can let these set and then sprinkle some bits on a bit later or you can decorate them up now. And other things you can use are um, chocolate sauce if you want to have a little bit of extra drizzle over the top or you could melt some Nutella or some chocolate spread. Uh, we're going to go in with an Easter bunny, maybe, on the bit, the big one. Oh, he's quite a big Easter bunny, but this is the thing with these is they're all fully loaded. So I'm going to pop him. I'm going to leave the two smaller ones. Let's, let's pop them in the fridge, actually. And these will, um, because it's not the depth of our normal cheesecake where we have to allow it six hours to chill, you do really want to allow it as long as possible to chill, but you can get away with a lot less on this because they're not, um, they're not as deep. So a couple of hours, if you're making them now, they'll be ready for this afternoon, this evening and things. So I've got my Easter Bunny. I'm gonna put on my unicorn my unicorn eggs, because these are pretty colours. We've got some blues, purples, scatter it over. Um, my youngest nephew made a cake yesterday. It's his birthday coming up, and we've been making a birthday cake for him in a couple of Sundays' time, so we'll be talking about birthday cakes, layer cakes. But he's also decided, because we can meet up in a way, um, sort of for walk, he's decided that Aunt Lou is making him a, or my sister-in-law, sister-in-law will correct me, a para, a parathosaurus. It's like, um, it's got a big curved domey horn on the top of its head that goes backwards. A mummy and a baby in a forest. So yesterday he, he was talking to mummy about what Auntie Louise was going to make him for his birthday cake and then promptly decided they needed to make one as well yesterday. Um, but he loves unicorns as well. So that's why I've got the unicorn egg. But he doesn't want a unicorn cake for his birthday. He wants a dinosaur one. Um, and I'm just, I'm just popping random stuff on here. That was a bit weird, strange, but it's, uh, you know, you can add extras. You could... Uh, Pop open a, a cream egg and drizzle with the goo. I'm going to give it a drizzle with some, this is just some ice cream chocolate sauce. If it comes out. No, let's stand that that way up for a little bit. Um, these Kit Kat eggs, mini eggs, I've popped on as well. Let's, let's go in with a good old mini egg. A little bit of other colour as well he's like a carrot <laughs> and there we go 
I'm just going to drizzle. Oh, that's a big drizzle. We're backwards and forwards. That doesn't want to work too much. It keeps coming out in big lumps, but hey, there we, there we go. Chocolate tinge on. And this is my half that's fully loaded that's going back in the fridge as well to set up. You can do that last um, if you want to. You, you, could, you could do the decoration last because it's an egg and those, even the small egg, so this, this size egg, the uh, 120 gram egg, it's still a lot for one people. Ian will testify because he tried to eat one normally. <laughs> but once it's set in the fridge um, and it's it started to come, take um, get it out, pop it on a board, and with a um, run a hot knife. Uh, sorry, run a sharp knife under the hot tap uh, and then dry it off, and then you can just slice it open or put them in a big dish um, with all the bits and pieces like all these toppings you could put it in a, in a in a dish put the eggs in the dish everybody chucks on their their favorite things a drizzle of chocolate some mini eggs some Maltese bunnies and then just get stuck in with a spoon again it's, it could be a really great sharing dessert as well but you can cut them and slice them up as well but then somebody that gets one end doesn't get a lot of biscuit <laughs> somebody in the middle gets all the biscuit and all the cheesecake filling but it's it's really easy just to bring it all together. Um, and like I say, what we now, 10 to 11, if you do them now, pop them in the fridge for a couple of hours. By the time you've had Sunday lunch, if you're having Easter lunch, um, they'll be ready to get out and serve. And you just pop them in the middle and, and help yourself. <laughs> um, and fight over who gets the chocolate shell. But that's it. It's told you it would be really quick and it's really easy and simple. It is a no-bake cheesecake um with the eggs so i used for the large egg i used this smarties one which is 250 grams and then but because this one didn't split open very well i used the um the smaller buttons 120 gram egg so i'll just give you a quick um rundown then let's actually show see if i can get a Screen share, share my screen. I can show you that. If you go over to the blog today, you will find the Easter egg cheesecake on the blog. If you, if we just quickly go to the front there, you'll see it on the front. We've got my top four Easter um, recipes. You've got the mini egg brownie tart, but you've also got the Easter egg cheesecake. And in here, We've got all bits and pieces. Um, the video, it will be coming soon, but you can also use this table of contents to jump through. You can also find my recipe substitutions here, things that I sort of like to, to do to it. You can switch the biscuits um, out. Like I say, you can make it gluten-free if you swap them for a no wheat gluten-free variety, but you need to double check that none of the other ingredients contain gluten. So do check it. Um, like I say, I know my sister-in-law can have cream eggs because they're gluten-free, but other Easter eggs might not be. So just double check those as well, um, especially if uh, they're celiac like Helen is. But you can also swap that cheesecake for anything that complements it, chocolate orange, mint arrow, crunchy or anything, and go wild with the toppings, depending what you've got. <laughs> you know, you might not have any, but you'll find all the information um, all my frequently asked questions about how many does it serve, how should I keep it, how long does it keep for, um, and what happens if your filling didn't set and why it didn't set. And there's also some recipe notes and top tips there about that's my microwave turning itself off about why we always use full fat cream and um, cream cheese and whipping cream and making sure that you whisk the filling as well. Now, one thing you do, I do say here, is if you are saving your Easter eggs to do this at a later date, or you're using Easter eggs from last year, do please, please check the best before date on those. Chocolate, it doesn't go moldy. It can bloom, it can go white. It's normally fine, but just double check. It just doesn't taste very nice, and it's 
quite grainy. So um, just double check that and it might not melt so easy as well. And then you'll find the full recipe as well there ready for you to do. And the great thing that these fab people at, um, who do our recipe cards for me have now got this cook mode on. So if you are using the website, you can just flick cook mode on and uh, your your mobile device or your, your laptop or whatever you're, you're using to guide you on the recipe will we'll hold it on that um, and it won't darken down or, or shut down because it knows you're cooking and you don't want to stick your sticky fingers over everything but you'll find all the recipe and the notes on the website and I have linked to let's see stop share stopping sharing Oh, look, and then we've gone to our black screen again. That was, that was timely. But yes, you'll find everything on the blog. So we have today made this uh, super easy Easter cheese cake. Uh, um, oh, Gina's going to uh, start these now. We'll pop a picture in the group later. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I hope you're doing all right. Uh, you're doing all right as well. I've been meaning to message people the last couple of weeks. It's been so crazy. I don't know what's been going on. But that's there. The recipe can be tweaked to whatever you've got. Our ingredients are really super simple. We've got our Easter eggs. We've got the biscuits, the digestive biscuits that we've used, a little bit of butter. Key ingredients, the double cream and the full fat cream cheese and the icing sugar for that filling melting the Easter chocolate in for that, and then everything else to go on the top. And you just need a large mixing bowl, a hand mixer, and I've used a mini chopper. And even when you're putting the cheesecake filling into the eggs, you don't need to use an offset spatula. You can use the back of a spoon or a palette knife or anything like that. So that's that. And, and yeah, it, it, I keep going here. It's over here website comes in .com, and it's at the top there easter egg cheesecake and i think even if you search google at the moment we're on we're sort of quite in the top top page but see if you can wrestle some eggs off the kids um and that's it for today so next week though we're going to be doing do i say it's healthier is carrot cake a healthier option? You know, we've had a lot of chocolate. We've had the brown tart. We've had the trifle. We've had the cheesecake. Oh, yes. We're going to go in next week for a carrot cake tray bake. Um, so we'll be doing it as a tray bake. And we'll be using our fabulous um, cream cheese frosting with a little spike of lime in there to, to ice at the top of it. And... Uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Haven't made a carrot cake for a very long time, but I've got my mum uh, visiting as well for a garden visit, so that will be something I can uh, uh, give give the family to try. Anyway, I hope that if you if you're making this, please pop these pictures up, um, like Gina said in the in the group on the Facebook page. Um, if you're not in the Facebook group, you know, come on over. We it's quiet because we're all just happily baking. But if you've got any questions or want to share your bakes or, or bunnies or any mishaps in the kitchen, which is usually happening here, we pop them in the in the group. But yeah, I hope you have a really lovely, sunny rest of your Easter Sunday and your long bank holiday um, if you've got tomorrow off as well. Oh, love a four day weekend. <laughs> um, and the uh, thank you, ladies, Gina and Jude. Um, and I will see you again next week. Take care. Bye for now. Oh, can't find the end of broadcast. <laughs>